you guys and welcome to the season finale of Real Debates. This has been a amazing uh, season. Season one has literally taught me a lot of cool things of how to edit this show and put things together and have new people join the show. Now for season, uh, I mean for this season finale episode 10, I had to do something different and something big. Now you guys have seen new competitors, but we actually have a season competitor. If you check out his YouTube channel, this man has an amazing following. If you check out all the things that he's done on social media, he's getting up there. And I didn't think I would have someone as big as this on the show, uh, especially within the first season. <laughs> I would like to introduce you guys to the new competitor, John Knight from Knight TFC. How are you doing today, Mr. John Ooh, Knight? Brother, that intro, I don't know. God, I'm going to live up to that. But um, no, man, thank you for having me. I'm excited. I'm nervous. Hopefully, I can come out of here with a W. We'll <laughs> see. But, man, thank you. I'm very humble. Thank you for having me. I, I can't wait. Awesome, awesome. And we, uh, we have last week's winner, who, which was a controversial winning in, in itself, Mr. Ian Elliott Carter. Ian, how are you doing today? <laughs> Why didn't I get a stroking intro like that? Like, oh, it's just Dan over here, too. Yeah, yeah. You're making me look bad, man. I'm glad to be on. I'm glad to meet Mr. John Knight, man. It's, it's, a, it's a pleasure. I hope to be on your level someday, man. The consistency pays off. Uh, so, yeah, uh, and thank you for always putting me on the show, Alex, for sure, man. And this is great to have three black men in the nerd culture just talking nerd stuff. I'm here for that. Awesome, awesome. Sure. And yeah, like Ian, uh, by the way, I, I didn't mean to have a bland intro for Ian. No, Ian. it's cool. No, I'm not over it. That's cool. That's a point off of you already. Point off of you already. Yes, keep keep doing that, Alex. Works my favor. <laughs> but Ian, Ian is amazing. I love the work that he does on his channel and also across the channels that we do together. But um, I will be going against John Knight and the last debate was actually against Ian. And we know how that turns out. You know, we don't have to bring that back up. But, you know, this That's debate is, is, is the question is, what is the best comic book movie ever? Like, ooh, and, we, and I gave John the opportunity to choose his, and I chose mine. Now, John will be representing Avengers Endgame. Oh, Oddly snap. enough, I'll be representing the Avengers. Ooh. So <laughs> this is going to be a match where I'm very interested to see where this is going to go. Like I stated before, Ian is our moderator and I'm going to pass it down to Ian. So Ian, take it away. All right. Like Alex said, I'm your moderator for the day and I'm not here for any foolishness. All right. I'm going to take my bias out and you guys better fight to the death. All right. Make it a clean fight. No name calling. Well, you can name call if you want a little bit. <laughs> but I want to, we're going to go over why these people, why these gentlemen pick their pick, why theirs is better than the other pick. And then at the end, the third round, we're going to have a free-for-all just closing statement. Uh, so we're going to flip a coin to see who goes first. Heads I win, tells you lose. Uh, heads I win. Okay, so pick a number between one and five. We're going to go with John Knight. No, one and 30. One and 30, John Knight. What is your number? 18. All right. Legally enough to, to, to smoke cigarettes and have sex. You, sir. Alex, what is your number? Uh, let's do, let's do 15. 15, 18 and 15. So close, so close, but dangerously legally. All right. So the, <laughs> so the answer was actually 25. So John Knight will be going first. Awesome, awesome. So John's pick is Avengers Infinity War, which is one of my favorite movies. But it doesn't matter what I think. you got to convince me that his is better. So, John Knight, why did you pick Avengers Infinity War? Let me get the time going right oh, quick. His is Endgame. Endgame, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Flip it and reverse it. Good thing I'm not debating today. All right. <laughs> All right. So, John Knight, you have to convince me why Avengers Endgame is your pick and why it is the best uh, comic book movie of all time. Ready? Go! Endgame is the best comic book movie ever simply just because it is. It is a rarity in itself. It is something that has been never, we've never seen something like this. This is a culmination of 10 years of one of the most influential and impactful cinematic series in all of film history. And this stacks up to that. You have every character that we could ever love and know throughout 10 years of cinema 
in one film and it pays it off beautifully. The stakes are high. The characters are balanced. Everyone has a moment to shine. There is an arc. It doesn't fully focus just on action and boom this, boom that. We have moments where we just sit and stick with our characters. We grow. There are stakes. You feel every moment and frame that is in this film. It does not hold back. It is legendary to say the least. What the Russo brothers have achieved absolutely phenomenal and you can say yeah we wouldn't have endgame if it wasn't for the avengers yeah avengers smengers but everything that avengers did endgame did tenfold by a billion and made it look like citizen kane compared to barney's fun time <laughs> moment and like, oh. that's what it feels like between the two because just what it accomplished cinematically from a story point perspective, what it achieved and made it all make sense and fluent and what an equal flow is amazing. You can easily drop the ball on a, such a film and expectation as Endgame had. And you just can't go any wrong. There's, there's no, I'm not going to say there's no flaw. There's flaw in every film. But <laughs> it's damn near perfect for what they had to deal with, for what they had to balance, the personalities, the actors, the scenes, the stories. Everything made sense. All right, that's enough. I've heard enough stuff. Shut, 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 shut. We are done. Your two minutes is up, my good sir. All right. Zip it. All right. You've hit some good points. So your introduction, you said that this was a, the biggest payoff movie. Uh, juggling it perfectly, I definitely agree. Uh, the stakes were at an all-time high. Uh, it did it a little bit better than Avengers, he claims. Um, it's a, he compared it to the Barney and Citizen Kane. I've never heard that one before, but wow. <laughs> Very bold claim, sir. Coming Very strong, bold claim. Coming strong. Coming strong. All right, Alex, you heard what he said. He, he did a little bit of a pointing at you a little bit in his, in his argument. But the question yeah. is... Why did you pick your pick and why is it the best? You could choose to uh, come at him in his uh, trash ass hat if you want. But, oh, oh motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, word. That's, that's up to you. That's up to you. You need to be debating okay. your okay. pick, which is the first Avengers, the one that set it all off of these team movies. Alex, are you ready to defend your rights? To party? I am ready. I am so ready. All right. You got to fight for your right to party. Ready? Why is the Avengers your pick? Go. So I chose the Avengers because the Avengers will always stand the test of time of our Earth's mightiest heroes coming together to defeat a common enemy in the MCU. This is the very first time where fans across this nation saw Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, Hulk, Black Widow come together and it wasn't a significant come together like they didn't even want to work together and they are fighting amongst one another but they come together to, def to defeat Loki and the Jatari. This movie sets the test of time in the president and the presence of every team up movie since this movie. Yes, we had the X-Men come out first but nobody got excited for the X-Men like they got excited for the Avengers. Yes, John made a comment about, you know, this, you know, this movie wouldn't, you know, Endgame wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the Avengers, which is actually very true. But, you know, the Avengers solved their problem without time travel. So oh. this was a really good, good interpretation of how to set up their characters, how to essentially humanize them in, in a way where this is not their movie this is a collective movie and if i cannot rely on someone like cap or iron man i'm going to die or i'm going to lose this fight and this is where you take different characters from upscale projects and they work together they build a they build a sense of uh, of, of of a team on um, working with nick fury and shield this movie is the best comic book movie ever put together in the history of our time. I yield my time. Ooh, with 20, no, 15 seconds to spare. Impressive, impressive round right there. He's claiming this movie stands the test of time. Hold on, sir, I'll call on you in a second. All right, he <laughs> says it, stand, <laughs> it stands the test of time. This is the first time we've ever seen these guys getting together. Uh, this is a timeless flick. And, you know, we can argue that both of them are, but you know, this is a timeless flick. I definitely agree with him. He said they solved the problems with 
without time travel. That is a big one right there. <laughs> that is one that you definitely got to remember right there, brother. And it's a team coming together. You know, it's not, you know, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great team up flick. You know, of course, the X-Men did it, did it as well, of course. His movie has a team up as well. Some would say a little bit more in his, but then, no, we'll, we'll let them battle that one out. All right. So, did you have any comments before we go on, John? <laughs> I'm just ready to go. You oh, to the, like, oh. oh, he's ready to go. He's angry. You've done pissed him off. You've disrespected him. I disrespected his hat. You've disrespected his movie. He is angry. Fuck the Yankees. Excellent. All right, John. So you started that last battle. So we're going to start with Alex this time. Alex, and you did a little bit of picking at him as well. You guys are already, before you even got to this round, you've already been, you know, poking at each other. It's, it's real cute. Maybe you should keep your hands to yourself and social distance. All right. I promise. <laughs> Alex, I want you to start us off right here. Why is yours better than Avengers Endgame? Why is Endgame not the best comic book movie of all time? Ready? Go! Now, this movie is arguably the biggest movie of all time from a box office perspective, from a culture perspective, from all these great perspectives. But what this movie fails to do is to deliver a satisfying um, conclusion to this story. Why don't we just find baby Thanos, you know? And Because when Infinity War ended, everyone was in disarray. Yes, it captures that moment, but... Once they kill Thanos, that's it. They just live their lives and they don't do really much. Um, after they kill Thanos, you know, Iron Man moves on. Uh, you know, the rest of the Avengers move on. And it takes them literally five years to figure out a plan to bring everyone back. But instead, you know, they let Thor chop off Thanos' head off without getting a clear explanation of how they could potentially get the Infinity Stones back. I stated earlier that they needed to use time travel. Like, what other comic book movie has not used the cop-out version of time travel to solve their problems? I mean, let's be clear. I, I think revisiting old times, like Age of Ultron, the first Avengers. What do you think? Maximum occupancy has been reached. Take the steps. Yes. Stop, stop. Guardians of the Galaxy was a cop-out because at the end of the day, they didn't really need to go back into time to find these Infinity Stones. They could have def definitely come up with a plan that shouldn't have taken a really over five years for them to save the planet and bring everyone back. And since when did Ant-Man become the clear the clear key to get everyone back. I mean, seriously, this guy couldn't even save his own self, let alone try to save the whole universe with time travel. You... Oh, gosh. Yes. Even Tony Stark said this is a bunch of bullshit, just like his argument. It is just a bunch of bull crap. So. With this movie, Although it's an amazing movie, but this movie lacks any form of substance and consistency with his characters. I yield my time. Ooh, with four seconds. I was about to go off if you went over, but you <laughs> did it. Four <laughs> seconds, Alex. You made it. Minute and 57 <laughs> seconds. Ooh, let's go over a little bit of the things he said. <laughs> he claims, John, that your movie has uh, failed to conclude a story. Uh, you could you could respond to that. <laughs> he says that uh, time travel is a cop out. It's a fair argument. It's a very fair argument. <laughs> and he said, "Who gives a shit about Ant Man? And Ant Man, this Ant Man disrespect, I'm not for it. But that is very disrespectful, sir. But I'm not going to take or give you a point for that. That's your opinion. <laughs> That's your opinion. But he did make a great point with the time travel cop out. It's a very good point. You had to convince me, sir, why it's not and why his movie is." Is not as good as yours. Uh, John, are you ready, my, my big I'm, good friend? I'm ready. All right, you ready for this jelly? Shake it! Go! All right, brother. So let's talk about stakes, first of all. First and foremost. So we want to talk about stakes between Endgame and Avengers. So we're glorifying the fact that, oh, they beat uh, pretty boy-ass Loki in two seconds, who's not really a threat to anything. Damn! Damn! But yet, there's no stakes in Endgame because they have to go back in time travel. So because they, there wasn't an easy solution for them to defeat their villain, that's a mark against them. 
Okay, cool. So satisfying ending. So a satisfying moment for 10 years worth of characters all getting wrapped up in a bow, not to mention our main six. So Tony, arc complete throughout 10 years. Arrogant, asshole, caring, sacrificing, whole nine. Cool. Cap finally got his dance. He finally lived his life that he thought he wanted to, but he finally got the life that he deserved. Cool. No wrap up there. You're right. Um, so uh, Thor, uh, Hulk is still going to be within the you know, universe and She-Hulk and all that. Continued story. Thor has a continued story as well, which will continue beyond the universe. Black Widow, dead. So everybody literally has a wrap up and is paving the way for the next future generation of Avengers. But no, no satisfying ending at all. You're absolutely right. Congratulations. You played yourself. So five-year plan, Thor and anger. Okay, so five-year plan, it took them so long. So everybody that could possibly do something about the situation that isn't emotionally fucked up, damaged, or frightened of the events that happened prior is dead or fucked up emotionally. So who else are they going to do to help solve that problem? To go you ain't got the answers, man. Them? You ain't yeah. got the answers. Kanye. I, I, <laughs> five okay, years, Okay, don't worry. Bro. I'll wait. Shut so, up, Alex. Um, Let him talk. Cop out. What, what are we copping out of again for end game? I, it was so much nonsense, I forgot. Destroyed <laughs> stones. So with the, store, with the stones destroyed and nobody else to do a damn thing about it, what else are you going to do? What solution is there to go from there? This wrapped up everything. This has stakes. If your, vil if your heroes have defeated... I've heard their enough. That's enough. Fuck. Two minutes are up. Damn. Zip it. Zip it. <laughs> enough. Calm it down. Oh, oh my God. Breathe. All right. Woo! Okay. Uh, there's a lot to say about that. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Let's start off with the Loki disrespect. Holy shit. Okay. Ant Man and Loki, what the hell did they do to you guys? God dang. But it's a fair assessment because he said the stakes were obviously a lot smaller, which he is absolutely right. The stakes are minimal in, in this one. And this point about the character's growth to this conclusion, he's absolutely right. We've seen Tony Stark go from, you know, a narcissist to, you know, a caring person that's willing to put it on the line. And everybody getting their conclusion like Cap and, you know, the story going going further with people like Thor and, and Hulk. And he did mention the, the deaths with, the, with their affair. So I think he did uh, make some great points to counterpart what you said, Alex. Um, a lot of great wrap-ups. And uh, his point, too, about uh, what, what do you do from there when you have no Infinity Stones? Why, what, what do you, you could come up with a conclusion. Well, what else are you supposed to do, Alex, when you got no Infinity Stones? So I guess I understood his point when he says, well, you got to go back in time to get them because they're, they're gone. They're no longer existing. So am I siding with John? No. Does that mean you won, Alex? Absolutely not. We will get to the conclusion at the end. This is round three, baby, the conclusion. John, you're going to start us off with this one, brother. So this conclusion, we want to hear your final thoughts. Why yours is better and why, is his, is, why his is the less superior one to yours. Uh, John, are you ready? I'm ready. Game face, man. Get loud. Let's do it. Let's Let go. Louder. Let's go. All right, John, your conclusion, your final thoughts. Let's go. Go. So Avengers is basically PBS compared to Endgame. So it's fun. It's a great time. You have, you know, if the family can love it, cool. There's no mature themes. There's no high stakes. There's no messages. There's no growth. It's just, eh, we all, the Avengers are together. Cool. Here's this nut. It feels great. So with Endgame, like I said, it's literally the combination of all of this. Your characters are wrapped up in a beautiful ass bow. Your stakes are high. It paves a beautiful way for the future of our characters that we know and love. And also to comment on the Ant-Man thing, just want to say, of course, he's just the savior of this. He spent years with Hank Pym learning the way of quantum physics. So of course, he's going to use that to help the universe and those that he's loved. Cool. Now, Endgame, like I said, it's, it's, it's an Oscar-worthy fucking film. It was. They got fucking robbed, I should say. I agree. Um, it's just so beautifully handled. What the Russos have done has never been done before. It is truly magical. It is epic in scale. It is epic in execution. Hats off to Joss Whedon for starting it. You did great, brother. But the Russo brothers literally said, this is mine. And created a moment in history that will forever be remembered and will forever be referred to and will forever try to be copied and future installments of universes, whatever it may be. How can we get to that? Endgame set the standard. Endgame made grown men fucking cry with fucking <laughs> Iron Man. Like, I straight bitched in the theater. Like, 
they brought people to their knees with the conclusions of these characters that we've loved for 10 years. Started with Avengers, cool, but it really tied the knot for all of us in Endgame and gave us a beautiful send-off and made us remember why we loved Avengers so much, but we wouldn't have be able to have that appreciation for the first Avengers if they didn't tie this off the way that they did. I reclaim my fucking time. Good job, bro. Ooh, that was a good round, man. Good round. Good points. Good points. He did it in a minute and 49 seconds. Uh, he said, basically, your movie had no messages, Alex. He said, he said, I'm not here for the Ant-Man disrespect. I'm going to give him his flowers. And he's the savior of the movie. Uh, yeah, he's. I would say he's one of the top five. Uh, he said, again, he juggled it perfectly. He said that uh, this movie will be copied. Um, you know, that's that's a controversial thing, you know. Yeah. This movie could be copied from, you know, the, his movie. So we, we, we'll, 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 we'll get into that. Um, and it did make me cry. Seeing Tony Stark die, that I seen his, I felt like he's part of the family since 08 from the first Iron Man movie. So, yeah, that did uh, touch my, um, my strings right there. So I definitely agree with that, brother. All right, Wait, Alex. Is there a loophole? Since I have a few more seconds, can I say one word? No, you can't. Bye. Alex, are you ready? All right. I'm ready. <laughs> I forgot All right. something. I told you to shut up, sir, and you, you zip it, or I'm putting you in content. All right. All right. <laughs> Alex, are you ready for your rebuttal? Are you ready to put this thing home, bring this thing home, brother? Yes, I am. Oh, he's welcoming it. He's welcoming it. I hope you've been taking mm. notes. Alex, oh, mm. ready? Go. I would, I would love to point out that, yes, there are a lot of touching moments in Infinity War. I mean, I'm sorry, Avengers Endgame. Ooh, but there's also out. a lot of touching, touching, touching moments in other movies as well. Black Panther, to be exact. Um, so this, the fact that this movie had a lot of touching moments that a lot of, made a lot of grown men cry, my response to that is, so what? Yes, <laughs> Agent Coulson... Uh, Oh, Agent Coulson was the very first real death that we seen that was actually a little bit more touching, I feel, that because it really set up the Avengers. This is what made the Avengers the Avengers. Seeing him die in the line of duty is what put these characters together. If it wasn't for the first Avengers movie establishing your love for all these characters, we wouldn't be so emotionally attached. That's the reason why Endgame did what it did and Infinity War did what it did. Um, I would also like to point out that Avengers, Avengers, in terms of the first movie and the second movie, the stakes are definitely not as big in comparison. But this is the very first time where the, the world is being invaded by aliens. So yes, what the hell are they supposed to do with a psycho god with Lo named Loki with some weird-ass alien race called Jatari? Yeah, and it's only six of them? Six of them beat all, of, beat all of their asses, but it took a whole squad to beat one purple turd. Are you serious <laughs> right now? And then at the end of the day, they called Captain Marvel to do shit. Nothing. Nothing. The whole point of the Captain Marvel movie was pointless. She called, She was supposed to be Nick Fury's right-hand woman. We literally see her in Endgame for like 20 minutes in the beginning and then at the end. And she's supposed to be the caveat. Man, bitch, please, okay? All right. <laughs> My thing is that, and also I want to respond back to what are they supposed to do with all the people gone? They have Wakanda and they had Tony Stark. They have all right, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, shush. You're, you're cut off. <laughs> <laughs> You've had enough, sir. Get this man an Uber and get him out of here. All right. So that was really good. That was really good, Alex. I, uh, I'm proud of you, sir. Um, Alex said, you know, who cares about your or feelings? Who gives a shit? You know, if you cry, you cry. You know, man up, son. Um, he, had, he had the audacity to say Colson's death was <laughs> – I can't even say it out loud. Please I get to my bottle. <laughs> oh, God. Hold on. Let me finish, John. You yes. shut your mouth. Yes. He had the audacity to say Colson's death was more impactful than Iron Man's death. Let us know in the comments what you think about that. I'm not that going to respond crazy. to that, but let us let us know in the comments. Uh, he also did say the Avengers did establish this groundwork for where it's at for Endgame. I definitely agree with that. Um, and this this was their first time that aliens did attack. This, this, this movie – pretty much established that there was aliens in the galaxy. They didn't know anything about this. So Alex made a great point about that. I, I definitely didn't even think about it like that. So yeah, they, they had to use their resources, what they had, and then they evolved eventually to get to Endgame. So I, I agree with that point. Um, and then at the end, some Captain Marvel disrespect. Okay, wow. Yeah, what did Brie Larson do to you? She's just reading the script, bro. She's just reading the script. <laughs> She's doing her. Uh, so 
it's time to make a conclusion. I've heard a lot of disrespectful things. <laughs> I've, heard, I've heard a lot of things I've never heard before. Colson, I'm still over that one. The Colson and the uh, Iron Man went, holy shit. Uh, you might be canceled for that one, bro. Uh, but uh, let's, uh, let's, let's recap real quick before I make my de uh, de decision. And so in the first round, we were establishing why you picked these ones. Uh, I think Alex and John did do pretty good with the with their analogies uh but i'm gonna have to give the first round to alex alex i think he hit hit it home with uh with the time travel point when he said uh we did this all without time travel great point john later on uh, elaborated why they needed to do it because they didn't have stones but you know in the first round i think alex did uh make make a good point like yeah they didn't need this uh this cop out of time travel they just handled it with their bare hands and knuckles so that's what it had to be sometimes it'd be like that mm -hmm. uh so second round ah, this one was a funny one <laughs> uh <laughs> but i think i'm gonna have to give this one to john because his uh his overall point about growth in in the mcu and how it got to where it's at now yeah that that did make uh end game have the the greatest payoff of that's tony true. not being that selfish person anymore of of, of, of cap finally getting getting that rest he deserves because he's been working his ass off since he became a super soldier, you know, the, the emotional deaths that came with it. So the growth, yeah, Avengers definitely hit that, that's that starting point, but that end game did do a good cap on that. Mm -hmm. um, but now we get to the last round, the last round. It's a, it's a crazy balance because I think it's not as easy as you think it was because you guys both said some dumb things, but you both did said some smart things. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, the best point that John said was about the emotional cries. Um, so, yes, as much as Alex is like, you know, man up, I did tear up. I did tear up when I saw it. Nobody wanted to see, see uh, uh, Iron Man go as much as we kind of saw it coming. It's, it's, it's as much as you see it coming when it's actually in your face. You know, it's a different thing. Um, and he, he did make those points about juggling. However, Alex did make a great point, too, about uh, how, they be, how they assembled for the first time and work together as a team and that's never happened in movie history honestly we we have great team up movies like of course x-men and other like spin-off movies that are not uh in in comic book movies but the way that uh josh Whedon uh found the balance in this was amazing your argument about uh the russo's doing it better understandable but josh Whedon definitely did put the groundwork on making it you know Making that blueprint amazing, and everybody is going to copy it from days on. This one, when John said that everyone's going to copy Endgame, well, I think Alex's point about the groundwork of Avengers is where it, where it actually started. So you can't take that one from him. But the Coulson versus Iron Man thing, man, I might have to, I might have to give it to John, not because of that. That might have been one of the dumbest things I've ever heard in my life. That's your opinion. But I do think that the final round – was fought a little bit better with John. John, congratulations, my new newcomer and uh, first winner. Woo! Thank you, big homie. Yeah, first one. Oh my gosh. You, uh, good, you, good job, bro. Good job. It was yeah. a good. It was a good battle. A lot of laughs. I had to keep my composure, but it was very good fought. Would oh you like to say God. anything, brother? It was amazing. Oh God, I wish we had more time. Like I just want to hear. I just want to go back and forth with you so much. It was so much fun. And yeah. So many points I missed and wanted to do, and just so many things points of his I wanted to touch on and rebuttal. I was like, oh my God, this is so much fun, guys. And thank you again for having me. I'm glad I'm the first people's champ. You know, <laughs> right? Um, but again, thank you guys for having me. This is amazing, Alex. You made a worthy opponent good sir thank you so much absolutely but yeah again you got close an iron man i, I want to jump through the screen was like, oh <laughs> yeah, that that was totally, that was that was all totally, funny bro that was total totally out my ass like i, I know <laughs> <laughs> alex you have anything to say about your opponent man oh man john is a formidable opponent and i'm actually glad to have you on the show man i'm definitely going to bring you back as Please. a regular uh definitely for season two because uh, you know, there are things about in-game that you brought up that I didn't really think about. Like, yeah, they're, they're distraught. What the hell? Th yeah, they're going to mope around. Like, they're not going to just jump into action. And that was a really good point. Also, I like the point that you made about Citizen Kane and PBS. I mean, <laughs> I, mean even though I still think The Avengers is the best comic book movie. I mean, they didn't really have that much to deal with like they did in in-game. So that yeah. was a very... Right. Hard fought battle, man. I, I really enjoy the so. confidence that you brought to the match. 
man, this was great for the culture, man. I'm glad to be a part of this, man. I thank you for bringing John on, man. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm happy to meet you. Hopefully we can have more conversations and oh, collaborations in the future, man. Oh, Shout definitely. out to you for being a badass moderator, dude. Crazy I'm motherfucker. I'm the best. But I'm absolutely, the best. man. Yeah. <laughs> he is the best moderator we have had. Yeah, for, for sure. Show. I love it. But uh, guys, I want to thank you guys so much. Both, both of you guys for being on the show. You guys are amazing. Um, uh, John, uh, where can we find you on social media and, and YouTube? So on YouTube, you can find me at Night TFC. On Twitter, uh, you can find me at film underscore cave JK. And on Instagram, you can find me at John Knight two underscores. I know there's running out of shit, but um, that's where you can find me. And this Sunday, and you guys are most likely to tune in too if you you know can find the time to. We're having a a major crossover event this Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on my channel, where all and tons of your favorite creators are going to be battling it out in an all-out trivia war. So Ooh. make sure you are there. It's going to be pretty intense. So come to see who ends up on top. And again, thank you guys. I'll definitely be tuning in, man. Definitely, definitely. And Ian, our amazing moderator and last week's winner, where can we find you on social media? And you can find me at uh, I underscore controversy at uh, you know, Instagram and Twitter. But please drop by my uh, YouTube channel at YouTube.com slash the controversy, where we do talk a lot of this nerd stuff, pop culture stuff, a little bit of hip hop. Join the conversations, man. I engage and read everything, man. Yeah, this was an amazing match. And I would love for you guys to keep coming back to Momentum Media. This wraps up season one. Season two will come out in the next couple of weeks. We're definitely going to... Uh, go into production of that because season two is going to be just as amazing as season one. I want to thank you guys for watching season one. Season one was the baby for Momentum Media, and I think it's really growing. So I really do appreciate your love and support. No votes will be recounted in this <laughs> match, okay? <laughs> Fuck all of your lawsuits, all right? Don <laughs> won. I can sure. see. I can see. Okay, I'm not going to be a bitch. I'm talking <laughs> about thank you, America. Thank okay? you. But I can see to this match. But uh, thank you guys for being on the show. Please like, comment, subscribe. And as always, you have a blessed day.